recording. Hi, Ian. Good morning. Hello. Well, my name is Renee, and I'm delighted to be Skyping with all of you today from the Buffalo Bill Center of the West here in Cody, Wyoming. Today we're going to be looking at the adaptations animals must have in order to survive in a variety of environments. The environment we're going to be talking about is Yellowstone National Park here in the United States. Wow. The animals in and around Yellowstone are, um, Yellowstone consists of several different kinds of environments, so we'll be talking about how animals must adapt to a variety of environments. And some are very specialized to their environment, and some are able to survive in a multiple uh, sets of environments. So the environments we're going to be visiting today are in and around Yellowstone. Yeah, this Yellowstone is in the Rocky Mountains in the United States, and the elevation of the mountains here is quite high. You might be uh, in meters. We work in feet and inches, so I can tell you that the elevation of our mountains is um, between 12 and 14,000 feet. Mm. You may need to look that up and convert <laughs> that. We'll also be so at the tops of the uh, mountains is very snowy and rocky and cold mm. most of the year, and animals have adapted to living up there. Then we'll be moving down the mountain into the forest, where trees provide habitat for a lot of animals. Then we'll come further down the mountains into the meadow, where there's a lot more water, and a lot of animals live who, who like to live in and around water are adapted to that. And then we'll end up in the desert, which most of Wyoming is in a high desert, high elevation desert. It's about 5,000 feet above sea level. And animals have adapted to living there. So we'll go ahead and get started. So I'm at the, in the Draper Museum of Natural History, and I'm at the top of the mountains here in the alpine environment. So this is a painting that shows what the alpine environment looks like. What does it look like to you? Snow, rocks. Do you see trees? No? Not really? No. There are no trees up here. The soil is much too thin for trees to grow because it's cold and snowy winter most of the year. But there are some animals that have adapted to living in these conditions. And I'll share my camera with you, and we'll look at some of the first ones. The first animal we'll be looking at is the mountain goat. Now, here's a word that may be new to you in English. Do you know the word camouflage? No, we no. don't. So camouflage is when an animal can blend in with its background. And you saw the color of snow, and you see the color of his coat. See, he's able to hide in the snow. He's oh. camouflaged, and he does that, and uh, that's an adaptation for protection and survival. He's also very well adapted to climbing around on these steep, rocky slopes because his feet are kind of soft, and it enables him to not slip when he jumps and climbs. So he's very well adapted to living up here year-round. Another animal that lives up in the alpine environment only in the summertime is the mountain goat. Oh. I mean, the, the bighorn sheep. And we call it a bighorn sheep because, well, he has big horns. Now, both the females and males of this species have horns, but only the male's horns get big and round like that. Here's another painting that shows the environment and what the animals look like when they're here. Now, this one is posed as if he's about to jump or leap. And that is something that uh, the animals do, in the, the males do, when they come down out of the alpine mountains in the wintertime and go into the meadows. They begin to fight with other males. I'm going to show you the skeleton of a bighorn sheep, and we'll come back and talk about the males in a moment. So this is the skeleton of a bighorn sheep. Now, if you think about it, a skeleton is an adaptation to living on the surface of the planet. Without a skeleton, you would not be able to eat, drink, find shelter, um, or breathe air. Not all animals have skeletons. Octopus don't have skeletons. Worms don't have skeletons. 
So having a skeleton is an adaptation to being able to live and move on the surface of the earth. Both of these are posed as if they're about to bump into each other. And that is something, that's the way that the males of the bighorn fight in the wintertime. They fight with each other in order to get territory and to attract females. And the way that they fight with each other is pretty strange. They run at each other and bash their heads together at a high rate of speed. But they don't get damaged by doing that. They have an adaptation to this strange behavior. I'm going to show you the skull of a bighorn sheep that's been cut open so we can see inside. So here are the top teeth, and here's where the nose was. Now, I want all of you to touch your own forehead. Touch your forehead. This is the bone you're touching, right? And your brain is right behind your hand, right behind your forehead. But look at this. They have a second forehead and an air pocket in between. So when they fight and bash their heads together, they don't get brain damage. We also call that concussion. It might be a new word, concussion, as brain damage. So let's take a look at the horns of the bighorn sheep. Does anyone know what a horn is made of? And I'll give you a hint, it is not bone. <laughs> Something like nails, I don't know. Nail? Nail or hair. Yes, yes, you're right. It's, it's the same material as your fingernails. It's yeah. called keratin, keratin. Keratin. Yeah, keratin. Oh. <laughs> it would be strange if our fingernails grew like that, yes? <laughs> Good thing they don't. So now I'm going to introduce you to an animal that lives up here in the alpine environment all winter, all year, but does not need to hibernate. Do you know the word hibernate? Hibernate? What, hibernate. what is that? Yeah, yeah sleep eat, through uh, the winter. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, so, yeah. Ah, yeah, I, I know the word in the computer. Aha, uh -huh, yes. Yeah, yeah, so something you live in a warm environment, you have no animals that need to hibernate, but animals who live in the alpine environment can't get enough food in the winter. Everything stops growing and gets covered with snow. So their strategy for survival or their adaptation is to eat as much as they possibly can all summer long so that they get, get very fat, and then they just nap and sleep all winter. But this one is very clever. He's called a pika, and pika? he does not need to hibernate. It's a relative of a rabbit, but it's very wow. small. And the, his adaptation for survival is he eats the, the plants all summer long, but he also harvests them, collects them, and stores them up under the rocks. So in the wintertime, he has a big collection of grasses that he can climb up into and have plenty to eat and stay warm. He does not need to hibernate. So where do they live? They where live in the, t the, the tops of the Rocky Mountains in the rocks. Okay. Yeah. Now another animal who lives up here too, but has a different way of survival, is the marmot. A marmot is a relation of a ground squirrel. And his strategy, you can see how fat he is. His strategy is to get as fat as he can all summer long because there's nothing to eat all winter, and he just sleeps through the winter. He does hibernate, okay. and that is a marmot. Like me, I'm fat enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't need to eat. <laughs> you can sleep. So uh, now the, another word that you might, might be new to you in English is migrate. Birds migrate. migrate. Do you know that word? Yeah, yeah. move from the, uh, one from place, place, place to it. place. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we have some birds that, um, even though it's very cold up here, some birds do not need to migrate because they're also very clever. This is a Clark's nutcracker, and he eats pine nuts. So pine trees have pine cones, and inside the pine cones are seeds we call pine nuts. Now, he's like the pika. He's very clever. He collects pine nuts all summer long and stores them, hides them all over the forest. And that enables him to have enough food in the wintertime. He does not need to leave or migrate to a warmer environment in the winter. Now, I'm going to move down into the forest. 
And I mentioned that we have pine trees here. Pine trees we call conifers. Conifers are those trees that have pine cones and needles. And we have another kind of tree here called a deciduous tree. Those are all the trees that whose leaves turn color in the autumn and fall off and then grow back in the winter, I mean in the spring. Now you have another kind of tree. You probably have palm trees as well. We, have, we don't have palm trees here, just the conifers and the deciduous. So now I'm going to introduce you to the top predator in Yellowstone. I'm deep in the forest now. And we have some wolves to look at. So the species name for this is gray wolf, but you can see it comes in colors other than gray. He's so here with a small so family. Yeah. Now, wolves live in packs of about 10 individuals usually, and only the um, leaders of the pack, the male and female leaders, have pups. The rest of them do not have children. So the aunts and uncles and cousins and brothers and sisters of the, of the alpha male and female help raise the pups. So they act like babysitters and, and nursemaids. So what would be another advantage to living in a pack beyond having help raising the pups? Another advantage. I, 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 I hear that some, uh, the wolf that live alone, right? They do, they do not live in the family. Yeah, one advantage, another advantage to having a pack is in being able to hunt animals that are bigger than yourself. Yeah, yeah. So they can, can cooperate. Yeah, they can cooperate. Yes, cooperate. Yes. Yeah. You see, he has a leg of an animal in his mouth. Yeah, his the, favorite, something like the deer, or neck of the deer, right? Yes. Yeah. The wolf's favorite food is elk. It's a type of a very large animal that lives here. I don't have an image to show you of an elk right here, but an elk can get up to, is, an elk can outweigh a wolf by about three times. So it helps to have a pack to be able to hunt. Yeah. I want to show you the size of a wolf. I'm going to show you some skulls. This is a fox, and you may have fox in Vietnam. We it's have. a small, yeah. small animal. Yeah, that's small, yeah, small. Yeah. And then this is a coyote. I don't think you have coyote, but it's, a, it's the size of a small dog. No, no, we don't. And this is a wolf. You can see how what a big animal it is. Let's take a look at the skull and see what we can learn from it. Look at the sharp molars. Back teeth are molars. Yeah. Canine teeth and its front teeth are also sharp. So what does that tell you he eats. If meat. Can, meat. Meat. Yeah, meat. He's a meat eater. And we yeah, call meat. meat eaters carnivores. Carnivore. You can also tell that he's a has a good sense of smell because he's got that big nose hole and yeah. he's got eyes on the front of his skull, which means that he is a predator. He's a very good hunter. Yeah. All, all animals who are predators have eyes on the front of their skull so that they can focus on whatever it is that they're chasing or hunting. So, are we predators? No, no. Uh, we have we, we have we have we have a nose. No, anyway, yeah. And south <laughs> I think that because we are spend time to learn and to work, so those things. Like, no, no, right. we, we we are. Well, we, we are. We, I think we, we are both everything. hunters, we, we, predators, yeah. and and uh, gatherers. So we are hunters gatherers, right? Yeah. So, now I'm hiking down into the meadow where there is a lot more water, and I'll introduce you to some of the animals that live down here. The first one is the largest one, and that is a moose. A moose. Moose. A moose. Oh. So it's a very, nice very dumb. Large animal, and he's very well adapted to living in this environment. He's got really long legs and a long face because he likes to wade into ponds and streams and eat the plants that grow underwater. So he's adapted to being able to wade into ponds and streams. Now, is his 
Are his eyes on the front or on the side? On the side. So is he a predator? No. 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 <laughs> no. So he is prey. He is prey to things that predate on him. So, in fact, young moose are a favorite food of uh, wolves and bears. But he has antlers. Antlers are different than horns. Antlers mm -hmm. are made of bone. Mm -hmm. Did you know that antlers fall off every winter and grow back every spring? Wow. So it's a very fast-growing bone. Mm -hmm. oh. Another animal that we have down in this environment is the beaver. I don't know if you have beaver in Vietnam. I don't think you do. I need. Yeah. I need. Uh, no, no, not really. We we have we have yeah, some, some, some Oh, do place. you? Okay. Yeah. So the I beaver need. lives really? is very well adapted to living around water. What a cute animal. Yeah. They they are very intelligent. They are very intelligent. Yeah. They have very amazing teeth because mm -hmm. they build they chop down trees with their teeth to build yeah. dams and lodges. They're very well adapted to living in a watery environment. They have an eyelid that is translucent so they can see underwater with their eyes open. Yeah. Their ears are very small so the water doesn't get in. Their feet are webbed and they have a paddle for a tail. And yeah. so physically they're very well adapted to living in a watery environment. But also behaviorally they're adapted because their only way that you can get into their lodge is through the door that is underwater. Yeah. They are really uh, amazing good builders. Builders? Yeah. 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 Very good builders. Yeah. Very good builders. Yeah. Another animals that we have in Yellowstone. Bear? Polar bear? Bear. Uh, no, no, no. bear. The uh, bear. Bear. Grizzly bears. Bear. These are grizzly yeah. bears. Yeah. Now, uh, grizzly bears are adapted to living in all of four of these environments. They can go down into the desert. They're in. You can find them in the meadow, in the forest, and they even go up into the alpine in the summertime because they like to eat some of the insects that collect under the rocks in the alpine environment. I guess insects are very nutritious, but I'm glad I don't have to eat them. So we have both black bears and grizzly bears. I'll show you some of their skulls. This is a black bear. And this is the size of uh, many bears in Asia. This is the grizzly bear. It's a much bigger animal. Let's take a look at its teeth and see what we can learn from it. Now look at its molars and compare to the wolf. It has the canine. And its yes. front teeth are more like yours than the wolf's. So what does that tell you it eats? Meat eater. Still meat eater, but they don't have to eat much. Oh, no. Well, they eat everything. Remember I just mentioned that they eat insects? Like them. And, like they, eat, <laughs> and they eat berries. They eat meat. They eat anything they can get. That's called an omnivore. Omni is Latin for every, so the omnivore. They have an even better sense of smell than the wolf. You see what a big nose he has. And his eyes are also on the front of his skull, which means that he is also a good hunter. He is also a predator. So now I'm going to take you down into the desert area, but as I go, I want to point something out that I think you'll find interesting. I'm going to show you the skeleton of an extinct animal. What do you think this was? Mm. No dinosaurs? <laughs> no way. Dinosaurs? Do you mean the dinosaur? No, no, it's not that old. It's a saber-toothed cat. A kind of tiger. A, a kind of tiger. A kind of tiger, exactly, yeah, with very, very, very long teeth. Long, long, long feet, like swords. Exactly, exactly. Yeah. So at the end of the last ice age, about yeah. 10,000 years ago, a lot of t top predators became extinct. What does the word extinct mean? Disappear. Disappear. Disappear, Disappear forever. We'll never see another yeah. one. Yeah. So now I'm down in the desert area. I'll show you a painting of what it looks like here. 
this is what a lot of Wyoming looks like. You can see that there are no trees. Yeah. There's, it's dry, mm -hmm. there's, but there's a lot of bush that we call sagebrush. And a lot of animals have adapted to living in sagebrush, including this deer yeah. and this one. Can you even see her? No. What yeah. happened? Oh. oh. So what is that word that when something blends in with its environment? Or is the color? Yeah, it's camouflage. That's the word. When something blends in with its background. So this bird is a sage grouse, and it lives only in sagebrush. It is actually on the endangered species list. Mm. They're somewhat endangered because they're so rare. They depend on a healthy sagebrush environment. They eat sagebrush. They lay their eggs on the ground, which is why camouflage helps them survive. Now, the males of the species have an interesting behavior. They like to push their chests out and fan their tails oh. out and make a funny gobble gobble noise. Oh. And they do that to impress the females. Yeah. <laughs> so, so like me, when we have a mere belly, I would just do a charge the females. Oh. <laughs> so, did you know that birds can be predators too? Really? Uh, yeah, eagle. Yeah, yeah. eagle. eagle. So yeah. Birds that are predators we call raptors. And raptors include eagles, owls, and hawks. These are two hawks. Oh. And the claws at the end of their feet are called talons. They have sharp beaks. Their eyes are forward facing because they are predators. And they also have camouflage so that they can blend in with the ground when they're eating on the ground. Now, the last animal I'm going to show you is the fastest land animal in North America. What do you think it might be? Mm. Eagle. Seal? No. The, the whale? Land animal. Land animal? Land animal. Elephant? Panther? The panther? The, the panther? Uh, Cheetah? Well, I'll show you. Uh, you don't have these in, in Vietnam. This is the pronghorn. Oh, where do you have Prong the fastest? Is the fastest? It's the fastest an land animal. Now, I, again, I oh, don't. The fastest. It can run about 80 kilometers an hour. Wow, it's wow. very fast. And the reason wow. it can run so fast is because it evolved at the same time as the cheetah, the North oh, American see cheetah. See see that. And it was the cheetah's favorite food. So it had to learn to outrun the cheetah. Mm -hmm. Now, it, interesting. It, it, it runs or it jumps? Uh, Run. It runs. Just runs. Run. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh. It's, so not, it's not really related to the antelope family of Asia. It's a unique animal um, found only in North America. Oh, we do know that one. So one thing that's interesting, I think, is that the cheetah, the North American cheetah, became extinct, just like the saber-toothed cat, about the same time as the saber-toothed cat. So the, now the pronghorn doesn't have any predators. It doesn't need to run so fast, but it still can. One thing it has not adapted to is fences. So it cannot jump. So it has to crawl under fences when it encounters a fence. So maybe in another thousand years, it will either adapt to fences or we will adapt to pronghorn and start building our fences differently. So those are the animals of Yellowstone. We have some time left if you want to uh, have any questions for me about anything that we've seen or any words that you didn't understand. Um, excuse me? Yes. Um, I want to ask if your uh, part that they can help students to learn uh, how to save animal and just like we did but um the students can allow to go in and to uh, go sighting in the park so well yes the i think that can you repeat your question one more time i'm not sure i totally understood um i ask you if um your students and school can come to can come park. to the park and to learn about no. the animals yeah. and, and how will you get and have them Oh, excellent question. We um, 
where I work is a big museum that is near Yellowstone, and so a lot of these animals, well, they all have, um, were either killed accidentally or died in some way, and their bodies were brought to us by the park so that we can preserve them and, and uh, pose them so that people can learn from them, because in the park you can't get this close to a live animal. So, so, uh, so uh, <laughs> where can you have the money to to have the animal? I mean, we have that. we have we charge visitors an entrance fee to our museum. Uh -huh. um, so we have a lot of memberships and visitors, and then also we receive some federal assistance from our government. I see. Yeah. Good question. So yes, Yellowstone is is closed right now um, because there's so much snow you can't go there. You can't drive, the roads are all snowed in. But in the summertime, a lot of people visit Yellowstone and they hope to see these animals, but they're wild animals and they're not always near the roads. So uh, that's why a museum is a good place to learn about the animals. Uh, Thank you. Uh, I, I, I had uh, a chance to visit your beautiful country uh, on March. Uh, no, oh, last year. Not here. Not and, last year. Uh, yeah, Nasia, I went to New York, and how far is it from um, oh. your place to New York? Um, it would be probably, so you're in Vietnam, it would probably be about as far away as um, Afghanistan. <laughs> very, we're, we're a very big country. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so yeah, you, it's quite a few, it's uh, several days travel to get to New York from here. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? How many species in Yellowstone National Park? How many Say that again. How many species in Yellowstone National Park? How many species? Ooh, that's a hard question. Um, I, I think you know if you count the fish and the birds and the insects and the uh, plants while well, it's in the thousands it's a very big big place if you're talking just about animals it would be a, a couple hundred at least amazing really? <laughs> amazing so in uh, your park will they return the animals to the nature after uh, after raising them Oh, they're never raised. They don't. They're they're completely wild animals. There's Aww. no no human interaction with the animals at all. We don't feed them. Oh, really? We don't raise them. No, they live the way that they have been living Aww. since before humans. Naturally. Naturally. Naturally, exactly. Yeah. So no, we have nothing. We try not to interfere with the animals at all. Oh. Yeah. Otherwise, you may break the <laughs> balance. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, and we want to have some places on the planet that still are natural, the way that they were before oh. humans. So this is one of those places. It's very special. Mm -hmm. do, you have... yes, do, you, do you have any question to, uh, to her? Yeah. <laughs> 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 so... Do you have any um like um uh, I uh, uh for if if our government uh, want to have something like what you have over there, can you please uh ready to have us? Well, it would depend on how much nature you all, you have left in your country. Are there wild places in your country? Oh yes, yeah, there are. Just yeah, a yeah, lot, quite yeah. Large. We, yeah. We will also have the national gardens. Yeah, yeah quite large. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so yeah, the um, reason that Yellowstone came into existence as a park is it was uh, designated that way before uh, Europeans ever even saw it. There were very, very few people that ever saw it, and it was decided that it was special enough back in 1879 when it was set aside as a park. So it hasn't um, had an opportunity to be misused. Mm. Or, <laughs> go ahead. Yes. Um, 
we are all love animals, and we want to do something with the animals to protect them. So, do you have any advice for us to uh, protect them and to um, maybe one day we can become a ranger like you? Huh. Well, hmm. the most important thing, in my opinion, is to preserve their habitat, because without a space to be, they won't be able to survive. So if you can protect your environment and protect them from being um, uh, poached or hunted or have people go build their homes nearby, you have to protect their space, their place, before you can protect the animal. What do you think that is uh, the most effective way to stop people from hunting wild animals? That's a hard question. Um, I would think that having enough money to survive without having to hunt mm. is probably, you know, the reason people would hunt or poach is for money. So um, some just hunt, hunt for fun, yeah. Some no, some, still some for fun, true. But I think I I understand in Africa where it's a big problem. It's a lot about money, and people need mm. they need to survive there and and feed their families. So I think if people can have enough to survive, they won't need to um, hunt the animals for money. It's my opinion. <laughs> yeah, because uh, we 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 <laughs> this is a, yeah, this is a hard problem. It's really hard. Yes, it is a hard problem. Yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for all of the intelligent questions, and I've in, enjoyed um, visiting Vietnam tonight. Oh, oh that we can see you in Vietnam one day. <laughs> yeah, that would be wonderful. <laughs> Hope I can see you in Yellowstone one day. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you and goodbye. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. Bye, -bye. Yeah. Bye, bye. 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 Um. Always it's, it's a, my first time I use Skype <laughs> like this. Yeah, um, actually, she did, uh, she did not tell me to uh, that she used her cell phone only. And uh, this evening, I told the stu our students to about how to control, how to share the screen on desktop. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. They they can uh, actually uh, we we can we have experience yeah. from something like that, and we can. Say our uh, uh, for for I mean the another times I mean another chances and we can have uh, experience on using Skype like this. Yes, and uh, you know Skype. And maybe is... if if the weather is not very good, uh, I and Mrs. Tui can stay at home <laughs> and uh, we, we can have lessons sure, like this. Sure, that's, yeah, right? that's the way. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. With, without going to school. Mm -hmm. Wait, do you want to say anything to say something? Nyan, are you sleepy? <laughs> oh, heaven. <laughs> Look, it's in the old tiger. Look. Oh. Look. Where was yes. it? Yes. in the, the old one. Oh, really? <laughs> I can't collect with him. Oh, oh, oh my goodness. All right. Yeah, um, don't worry because... Oh, I, I don't know why. I, I, I cannot install because, Skype. Yeah, yeah, because I create two Skype cards and uh, the, the, the time for the two talk cards, that's only one or two hours. And I think uh, Duke is missed with the first one. Uh. Okay, so no, don't worry because I uh, record, um, you know, one of the best benefits of Skype for Business is um, uh, it have, um, uh, let me, let me share my screen. Yes. You mean that you can capture the, the conversation? Oh, uh, conversation. Yes, I, I can record it. No, not I can record. Um, um, yeah, I can record the videos and... Uh, we can share it or in our Facebook group or in, or on YouTube or any type. You can uh, rewatch the videos. Mm, you sh should share it, share it in uh, on our Facebook group. I, I don't know that. Uh, I don't know this this uh, function. Yeah. I and I sh when I use uh, Skype, I mean free version. Uh, I don't know this the function. 
Yeah, you know, just only sky for business. Oh, that's the thing I told you before you went to Canada that uh, it would be nicer that if the guy have uh, this this function, oh. right? <laughs> okay, yeah, I see. Okay, that's good. Post it on our Facebook and we can uh, listen to it again. Yeah. Anyway, uh, for uh, I think uh, for. I mean, for the conversation like this in the future, um, you should um, know what who who we are going to talk with, um, yes, yes. what we are talking about, so that we can uh, prepare the better mm-hmm. questions. Yes. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, it's the um, nicer. Yeah, yeah. I see. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, I sent her um, from eight to ten. Um, answers or something like the requirements however I just uh, see just uh, re- uh, accept the, my invitation and I read something on the uh, website about the lesson plan I see so yeah, yeah I mean we, we need more information mm-hmm. for, for such kind of uh, conversations so sure. we can have better preparations so, so that it could um, keep the conversation go smoothly. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Okay. Oh yeah, it's... look at me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's nature now. It's quite nature now. We we yeah. we should go get back to your work. Yes. Bye bye. Thank you very much. Bye.